When you have a series like Resident Evil that's been around for so long and has a ton of fans, you know they're going to do some crazy stuff. Today on Game Ranks, we're here to talk about 10 crazy things Resident Evil players have done. Starting off at number 10, after the PC release of Resident Evil 4 Ultimate HD Edition, two fans decided they could get it looking even more HD. These two are calling this project the RE4 HD project. It started off with them working on textures in the game, and when you look at it side by side with the retail release, like, it's night and day. It's so different. You don't realize how muddy the game looks until it's next to these redone images. Also, judging by the website, it looks like they're moving on to just remastering pretty much the entire game. But yeah, it's so cool that there are people out there that love Resident Evil 4 so much that they're willing to make it better and make it better for free. Hats off to you guys, you rule. Moving on to number 9, sure, Resident Evil 4 is considered a modern classic at this point, but it went through quite a few changes between launch and its announcement in 2001, having gone through four different versions before settling on what we all know and love today. We saw a glimpse of one of the cancelled versions in the demo Capcom showed off at E3 2003, which looked cool as hell and had a very specific vibe that unfortunately never made it to the release. That said, in 2018, a big Resident Evil fan by the name of Shigu Works showed off some of their own work of Code Madman, a Resident Evil 3.5 revival where they're attempting to straight up remake a playable version of that fabled E3 2003 demo. It's really interesting to see a weird combination of the over-the-shoulder revolution the game ushered in, but combined with them trying so hard to keep some fixed camera angles in. It's very jarring to see the constant perspective changes, but it sort of works. Not to mention this Resident Evil 4 concept had a way different vibe with more of a haunted house emphasis and supernatural characters. Moving on to number 8, this next one is short and simple. Some Resident Evil 2 super fan went through the trouble of making a big, gross, wet William Birkin costume and wore it on the crowded New York Comic Con show floor. It's not really a character you expect or see a lot of cosplay for, so we really gotta give props to them because it's damn good. And it's really gross, just like Birkin would be in real life. I mean, look at this, come on, this is awesome. Coming in at number seven, we have a bit of a weird one. Uh, cakes, yes, like the dessert. There's a baker in Britain named Karen Mitchell, and she specializes in making spooky and creepy cakes. She's done Walking Dead cakes, a really creepy Tim Curry Pennywise cake, a Leatherface one. But this is a Resident Evil video, so we wanted to shine some light on her nemesis cake. This thing is gross, but in a good way. It legit looks like a detailed bust of Nemesis. This thing does not at all look like a cake. It looks wet and shiny, just like you think Nemesis would be. Make sure to check her out. She has some amazing stuff, and if you're a fan of horror movies, you're going to love her work. I mean, just look at this Nemesis cake. It looks great, and I really want to taste it. And at number six, this next one isn't actually something a fan did, but is instead a story of someone having no idea what Resident Evil even is. A skincare center in Vietnam accidentally used the Umbrella logo as their own logo, and they had no idea. They issued an apology and everything, but yeah, this is just a big mess up on their part. And also, like, can you imagine going to this place for skincare and you see the Umbrella logo? the logo of a company who is in the business of literally ruining your skin. Zombies, liquors, tyrants, all of these things have horrible skin. And they're running around ruining your skin, literally ripping it off. It's almost like Umbrella's never heard of lotion. I'm sorry, that's a bad joke, I'm done with this point now. Next up, at number five, we have this gem. Someone was so excited about the Resident Evil 2 remake that they made this piece of uh, art. Yeah, that's that's really it. I uh, don't know what else to say. It may have danced a little in real life, but this, I, I don't know, man. This is a little over the top. Coming in at number four, it's easy to forget about Resident Evil Outbreak, be it intentionally or unintentionally, but a lot of people didn't and are still shockingly passionate about this weird online co-op PS2 zombie shooter. So into it, in fact, that 10 years later, long after the servers were dead and buried, a bunch of fans managed to revive it and restore online play via some private servers. Granted, it only works for the Japanese versions of the game, but in 2014, Outbreak Server restored online functionality to both Resident Evil Outbreak and Resident Evil Outbreak File Number 2, and was made by reverse engineering the server via packet captures from the Japanese version of the game, hence why you need the Japanese version of the game. It's definitely interesting to see this game in particular be the the source of such a project, but like, do you. If you like it, go for it, I guess.
Moving on to number three, before the announcement of the Resident Evil 2 remake, it was something that fans really wanted to happen, but also assumed it never would, seeing that Capcom was silent on that subject. The Resident Evil 1 remake did well, and people liked it, so I think it was just assumed that the same would be done for Resident Evil 2. And with fans starting to lose hope, an Italian game studio that goes by Invader Games took it upon themselves to remake the game. What started off as a mod using the assets from the Dark Side Chronicles turned into an almost full-blown remake. Resident Evil 2 Reborn was built in Unreal Engine 4, and the team was also adding new lighting effects, reworking how the game played, rewrote some of the script, and honestly, it looked pretty cool. At first glance, it kind of looks like an early beta version of the Resident Evil 2 remake that we just got, but unfortunately, Capcom did end up pulling the plug on this, which is something that usually happens with projects like these. But the little bit of work we got to see from Invader Games did look pretty promising. Next up at number two, people that like the Resident Evil series can sometimes really love it. The crew over at Most Awesome Sauce and Superhuman Films love Resident Evil so much that they actually made a fan film and it's actually really good. Jill Valentine and Hunk make an appearance, the zombies look and sound surprisingly good, and the film takes place on an umbrella ship and it's a perfect setting. There are some really cool fun action scenes and seeing Hunk running around doing his thing was a lot of fun. There's also a nemesis that pops up in it that kind of looks like the Toxic Avenger, but it doesn't take away from how scary and intimidating he looks. Yeah, it's just really cool to see a group of people that love the series so much that they put together this movie. And it seems like it was a lot of fun to be in. So, you know, if you guys ever make a sequel, uh, just you know, maybe let me know. Cool, thanks. Finally, at number one, some fans are hungry for pretty much any new thing they can squeeze out of their favorite games. And this is especially true for Resident Evil 4, where people were still finding Easter eggs up until a year ago or so, a full 12 years after the game's initial release. The Easter egg in question was detailed in a video by a YouTube user by the name of Slippy Slides. Found towards the end of the game, if you use a gun with an enhanced sniper scope, you can see a figure out in the distance in some ruins that are unreachable in normal play. If you free the camera and go out there to investigate, you can see what appears to be a 2D texture of a person in a green jacket imitating a zombie. It's a weird little thing and how they manage to even uncover it and investigate something a few pixels off in the distance is way beyond me, but we love this kind of shit that shows just how devoted some people can be in finding every little Easter egg in their favorite games. And those are 10 crazy things Resident Evil players have done, but we want to hear from you. So meet us down in the comments and let us know what you think. Have any of you done anything crazy that's Resident Evil related? And is there something out there that we may have missed? As I'm sure you already know, hitting the like button really helps us out. And if you're new here, subscribing is a good idea because we put out videos like this every single day. As always, thank you for stopping by to hang out with us. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.